Hello, I'm Amy Zaley with the Jerusalem Connection Report for July 11th. The truth and nothing but the truth. For those of you who may fall victim to the propaganda and sensational headlines of the BDS movement, that is the Boycott, Divest, and Sanction movement, which is seeking to starve the nation of Israel off the face of the map because it is claiming that Israel habitually and systemically violates human rights of the people in its region. Let me clarify a few things and give you a few for instances on why this is a ludicrous claim. First of all, the all-female tank commandership is up and running with the IDF. For the first time in IDF history, a tank commandership is now staffed by four female commanders. And they will take their position on the Egyptian border with Division 80 after their 16 months of training. As well, the Israeli police force recently graduated 17 Arab women as officers in their ranks. This gives Arab women a noble profession, a livelihood, a sense of contribution to their own community, and a sense of personal power that the surrounding nations in the Middle East would never offer a female. Prince William of the UK is on his first official visit to Israel, the first uh, British monarch or uh, royal to visit Israel in many years. He has been in Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, and other places just last week. Prince William hailed Israel as a vibrant country that, quote, thrives on innovation, diversity, talent, and excellence. And he said that ties with the UK and Britain are at an all-time high. He promised Britain's support in the quest for peace between Israel and its neighbors. And for those of you who think that Israel is an obstacle to peace in general, let alone as well as an obstacle to aid to the people in Gaza, just last week Hamas would not accept an Israeli proposal to set up a seaport in Cyprus as a point of entry to serve the Gaza Strip in humanitarian supplies. Hamas would not accept this proposal unless Jerusalem conceded to its demands to release dozens of its uh, convicted terrorist members held in Israeli jails since 2014. So it is the Hamas leadership which is holding its own people hostage for supplies to get the seaport set up. They won't do it unless Israel releases known convicted terrorists who have overtly attempted to uh, or have killed or hurt Israeli citizens. I'm not quite sure what kind of bargaining this is and what kind of good faith negotiation it is. this is, but it's certainly not in the best interest of the Gazan people. And anybody who knows the truth about this can understand and stop saying that Israel is the one blocking a pathway to peace. Israel has repeatedly, over the decade, decades, conceded to uh, Hamas and PA and other organizations' demands and got nothing good from it, or when they hold fast to their basic tenets for security, are hailed as the obstacle to peace. You likely didn't see this on the, June, on the news, but on June 25th in Iran, the Ayatollah Khomeini's dictatorship had its first, a biggest protest challenge uh, from any time since 1989. This time, Iranians no longer want ref this time Iranians want reform, and in 2009, 2009 it failed with no hope from the then Obama administration in the U.S. This time, they don't want reform; they want regime change. Crowds, mostly consisting of people under 35 years old, were chanting "Death to Palestine," not "Death to Israel," and not "Death to America," but "Death to Palestine," because they understand that all of their ills and the funding and the country's money are going to this ill-conceived idea of a Palestinian uh, hardship when they know it is for terrorism. If their regime fails, Hamas, Hezbollah, Palestinian Jihad, all will have to say goodbye to their funding. Iranian people are begging for reconciliation with Israel and Israelis. They don't know Jews, but, but they hear good things, and they're constantly using social media to reach out. Many Iranians have no personal grudge against Israelis or Jews in general, and many Iranian Jews who fled to Israel in a generation ago still have neighbors in Iran who remember them fondly and want to reconnect. In a recently published book by the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs titled Defeating Denormalization, Shared Palestinian and Israeli Perspectives on a New Path to Peace, nine case studies were done with Palestinians to share their story about how the BDS movement negatively affected themselves and their neighbors with the loss of jobs and other revenue. These interviews revealed on how the Palestinians were not, or not only not helped by BDS, but actually harmed.
Many Palestinians are speaking out against BDS at great personal peril because this is against the code to, um, to keep in line with the political movement of Israel is all bad. In one chapter, a lady named Alush wrote how people worldwide donate money to the PA and quote, I do not understand how the entire world can donate aid money to the PA when the bureaucrats refuse to create jobs for their own people. She also went on to note the corruption. The PA also gets taxes. Every Palestinian worker in the Israeli industrial zone pays a hundred, a thousand, excuse me, um, Israeli shekels a month to the PA. And then the PA takes this very money and supports the BDS movement with it, both domestically and abroad. One Palestinian wrote that this doesn't even make any sense. You pay taxes to support your economic uh, surroundings, and then they turn around and use the tax money to undercut it, allowing the Palestinians themselves to be punished with a loss of job. Many Palestinians are not sure if the BDS activists really understand the ramifications of their actions or if they're doing it on purpose. According to many Palestinian workers interviewed for the book, Israeli companies provide better insurance and better benefits than most Palestinian companies, and they're also far more economically stable. While economic stability is not the only way to achieve peace, it is one major component to peace. Moreover, in, an, or in a tabletmag.com article written by Armin Rosen and Leo Leibowitz just last week, a U.S. BDS umbrella group has been specifically linked to Palestinian terrorist organizations. Connections between an American charity and Hamas and, other, and Palestinian jihad, Islamic Jihad have been documented. This article, which you can find at the website called tabletmag.com, meticulously goes over the history of a, the U.S. Campaign for Palestinian Rights, which is an umbrella group and a Virginia-based non nonprofit organization that has redistributed funds to 329 pro-BDS organizations that work to advocate for Palestinians' rights and shift U.S. policy. However, in the recent weeks and months of my reports, you will know that BDS activities are generally anti-Semitic, and like I've always said, the money is also funding not just a BDS movement, a PR campaign to choke off Israel, but actual violent terrorist campaigns seeking to remove Israel from the map. So I'm asking you all to please seek the truth. Dig deep. Don't believe a headline that you see or a sensational tagline on someone's Facebook or Twitter post. Find the source, find the for instance, and find the context. The truth is out there. It's often obscured by loud, screaming voices of hate, but it's out there if you just dig. Seek truth and you shall find it. Shavuotov. Have a great week.